I quickly want to introduce Mansoor, who comes with 18 years of experience and commercial industry knowledge in portfolio program and project management with the ability to continually define structure and deliver high profile, high value, complex and challenging programs of work. I understand that we've already crossed a couple of minutes into the webinar. So without any further delay, Mansoor, I'd like to hand over the session to you. Thank you, Sushil. Thanks for your kind words. Uh, hello and welcome everyone who's part of this webinar today. And uh, this is a series of webinar which has been running for almost uh, four months, three months from now. This is the fourth part. And here we are trying to slowly unpeel uh, uh, what SAFE is talking about uh, and the trends in what uh, agility and agile is moving towards. So as introduced, my name is Mansoor. I have been part of Knowledge Heart team for almost about eight, nine years uh, from now. And uh, my research is in business agility and uh, agile governance. So that's, that's my PhD, that's my area of research. I've been mentored by Dean Leffingwell uh, way back in 2014 uh, when, when SAFE was uh, SAFE uh, 3.0 and I've been associated with SAFE for a long time, been a practitioner, implemented SAFE and other uh, frameworks across many organizations, including Airbus Helicopters, Telstra, Optus, and, and many more. Uh, so uh, yeah, please do reach out to me for, for more further conversations. Uh, and today we're going to uh, go to the, out of the seven core competencies, uh, last webinar we covered about agile leadership. So today we are going to unpack a little about the lean portfolio management with SAFE uh, to see what lean portfolio management talks about. Uh, I've been a PFMP portfolio management certified by myself. And when I started uh, understanding what uh, SAFE talks about portfolio management, it was it was completely different to what you know the traditional ways of working were. But again, it was very interesting. So what happens is a lot of organizations at the team level they go agile but they they struggle to get the agility on top at a program and portfolio level okay and especially at a portfolio level where the leadership are involved where strategic decision need, uh, needs to be made uh, where we need to have the principles of lean system thinking system development right so that's that's where agility is needed the most and today we'll see a little about uh, what this is all about and we do have a program of lean portfolio management coming up next month feel free to enroll it's a three-day program from knowledge Hub, uh, and and you'll get to see this more in action as we go with some practical examples so let's go back to our basics all right so uh, mick kirsten in his book uh, which is called productivity of software development in an enterprise uh, he talks about uh, about the digital transformation. So Mick Kirsten says, the problem is not with our organization realizing that they need to transform. The problem is that organizations are using the old managerial frameworks and infrastructures and models of the past to manage their business. Yeah? So that, that's, that's a big issue, right? So in his analysis of work uh, for in projects to product, uh, that's a very great book, and I do recommend you to have a read of that. He notes that the respect of production capital, the productivity of software delivery at enterprise organization falls wholly behind that of the tech giants and digital transformation should be turning the tides are failing to deliver the business results. Why? Because they're using large uh, and old managerial frameworks okay so large enterprises face uh, extensional threats and distinct distinctive competencies and massive tangible assets that got there to distribute the real assets manufacturing retail local banking um, so on and so forth but why are these leaders facing the difficulty the leaders are facing this difficulty because the teams have gone agile but the portfolio level is still looking at the traditional ways of working. Okay. Now, to, to take this further, what another thought leader, John Cotter, said, we need to rethink our organization, right? The world is changing at a very fast pace. 
at the rate which basic system structures culture build over the past centuries cannot keep up with the demand being placed on them so the question is how do we make the transition right uh, in his book building strategic agility for faster moving world uh, Cotter talks about how do we lead the change what are the paradigms associated with the past technology revolutions and how do we build in a legacy of inflexibility hierarchies that are unable to adopt modern challenges right and that's that's where the whole journey starts to rethink how the organization is structured how the organization is is but the good news is we don't trash everything what we know the solution is not to trash what we know and start all over again but to reintroduce a second operating system. So Cotter also talks about instead of dumping the old solution and getting a new one, he talks about having a parallel operating system. We still need the hierarchy systems that drive the current revenue model, provides efficiency, stability, keeps the heat, power, lights on, selling and maintaining their products and service, but we also need a second operating system to add to what we are doing. And one which focuses the customer as a forefront of what, what we actually do. And that is more nimble, more adaptable, and there is value stream based, where we have customer the forefront of what we do. And we have one operating system, which is on our fingertip. So this is, Dean Leffingwell. So Dean Leffingwell says, uh, who is the creator of SAFE and he's been one of my mentors. He says, every business is a software business now. Achieving the state of business agility means that the entire organization is just not developing, but engaging continuously, productively delivering innovative business solutions faster than the competitors, right? So many companies and traditional organizations are becoming software companies, the banks, insurance, automotives and more all are affected by softwares in fundamental ways most capital investments include technology components regardless of company size or industry achieving a state of business agility means um, to, to get the whole marketing the uh, the solutions everyone going agile right so that's a very big shift moving your marketing into agile moving so business agility is talking about the whole organization and the whole ecosystem going agile. So for business agility requires technical agility, business level commitment, value stream thinking, and also requires everyone to involve delivering business solutions using lean practices. So here we'll talk about, uh, you know, the finance going agile, right? Having, uh, you know, participatory budgets, the people going agile, which is, you know, most of the people have already transitioned towards agile, the enterprise going agile, the marketing going agile, the legal going agile, the operations going agile, the development going agile, right? So we are talking about agility at all different levels. So now taking our conversation forward from where we had left last time, uh, we were talking about the seven core competencies, okay? Uh, the seven core competencies are enterprise solution delivery, agile product delivery, team and technical agility, agile leadership. So we did cover uh, agile leadership in the last webinar. And today we are talking about lean portfolio management, and then we'll be talking about organization agility, continuous learning culture, and so on and so forth. So this series will have all the seven core competencies covered, right? So, so now without, so to achieve business agility, the organization requires significant degree of expertise across the seven core competencies. While each competency can deliver value ind independently, they are also interdependent in the true business agility can be presented only when the enterprise achieves a meaningful state of mastery for all competency, right? So that's where the holistic approach comes in, where an organization masters all the seven core competencies of business agility. Now, as we move further into uh, this particular dimension, so we are talking about three dimensions of portfolio management. 
right the first dimension is strategy and investment funding okay so here we need to think about what strategy means for the organization is it coming top down or is it bottom up or is it coming from the middle going up is it emergent is the strategy emergent right now here the strategy formulation takes place at a business owner and you know the executives the enterprise architects they help formulate strategy and when you ask about a strategy to an executive in an organization you will not get one answer you will get multiple answers because there's no one person thinking like the other person about what strategy is and everyone has got a different answer to this this reminds me of an activity which i normally do when we do strategic formulation when we uh, do a strategy formulation exercise in organizations uh, i normally do a small demonstration where we have people stand in a queue and then we provide them instructions and ask the person to pass the instruction to the second person the second person has not known what the first person has seen the instructions by the time it reached the nth person in the whole queue the whole message is lost in translation okay so many a times these uh, strategic conversations go in different directions the second dimension we'll look at is lean governance here we talk about an agile pmo right how agile pmo are formed uh, and we'll talk about the agile portfolio operations which is using the lean agile center of excellence the rtes the community of practices so the three dimensions of lean portfolio management which will be fleshed out in the class consist of strategy and investment how organizations and business leaders need to move away from the traditional funding uh, cycles uh, into the more agile and participatory budgeting how the governance has to go lean rather than having a stringent governance approach how can we go lean and the agile portfolio operations this will be covered in more detail in the session which is a three-day session as i mentioned so in his book escape velocity by jeffrey moore he talks about most enterprises do not have a clear understanding of strategy and lean portfolio management aims to create that clarity people do not know what strategy means a lot of strategy dialogues end up with executives talking across purpose because nobody knows exactly what is meant by a vision strategy and no two people ever quite agree on which topics belong where that's why when you ask a member of an executive team to describe and explain the corporate strategy you frequently get wildly different answers we just don't have a good business discipline to converge on that and based on my experience when i do strategic planning many of times the executives are quite silent they don't get to highlight what the challenges are what the issues are and they just keep quiet in those circumstances i ask the leadership teams to articulate and come up with what their thoughts are because when this leadership team or executives go to their team and do not communicate the right message of what that strategy is all about the team members who follow the leader are in a different tangent altogether from what the organization actually perceives to do so many a times when i conduct the strategy formulation meetings i ask the executives and the leadership team and the business unit heads to explain what strategy is and what does it mean for their business i used to work for an organization called emc data storage solutions uh, way back in hopkinton uh, united states we had a great process to get everyone aligned to the strategy so we had the leadership team uh, the ceo uh, at that time was joe tucci he would conduct a all hands meeting uh, to to all the employees either you know face to face or it was online or whether it was a recorded session but everyone got to listen from horse's mouth directly from the ceo and then the business unit leads and the directors used to come to their business units and 
communicate to the team saying that hey you've listened about what the strategy is for 2020 or whichever year it was what does it mean for our business and our KPIs, key performance indicators were all linked to the strategy. So the, the individual KPIs were linked to team KPIs, the team KPIs were linked to project KPIs, the program KPIs, and the portfolio KPIs, eventually to the organization KPIs, right? So if the organization doesn't perform, it hits right from the CEO until the person at the grassroots level. Similarly, if the team performs or an individual performs, it goes all the way up. So the corporate strategy understanding is, is very important. And we used to demonstrate this in EMC using large visual boards across. And on our mouse pads, we used to have our vision, mission, and key strategic pillars written on our mouse pads, right? So that everyone goes and sees what it is. We used to have them as our screensavers. And it used to get ingrained saying that, what are my core strategic pillar? And that is very important for alignment. This reminds me of a great video from Simon Sinek. He talks about leaders start with why. And it's very important for the organizations to come up with why before they do the what. Okay. And that is what becomes a part of the visioning and the strategy formulation. So, the elements of enter enterprise strategy formulation. So we'll have the key inputs. The key inputs are vision, right? The vision has to be realistic. It has to be on a postcard. Uh, initially, it could be you know, uh, not, not so clear, but again, it, it doesn't have to be a, a, a big uh, rhetoric where people feel it is, you know, it could be off tangent. Uh, there should be a guided mission with the core values of what the organization values are like honesty feedback trust courage right so the vision mission and the core values are the guardrails for your strategy strategy is best described as a plan of action to achieve the mission and the enterprise therefore defining a strategy is a very critical part of every enterprise and the effective strategy answer the effective strategy answers for critical questions number one what customers and markets do we serve what product and solutions do we provide so what is a product what is a service uh, what do we actually provide right what is a unique value proposition that we bring to our customers uh, and how will we extend this to future how is it sustainable so business have got various ways of uh, formulating enterprise strategy uh, generally we have the vision which represents oops sorry we have the vision uh, just to skip the slide uh, so we have the vision uh, which is talking about where the future future is all about represents the future states the mission talks about the business objectives implementing the enterprise uh, they, they talk about uh, they, they may be somewhat temporal uh, and it could be incremental the core values provide a belief system which will govern the behaviors and activities and then the enterprise business drivers which reflect the emerging industry themes and trends of the business and the distinctive uh, competence so what the competence is required so agile uh, strategy naturally le leverages on distinctive uh, capabilities, unique advantages, differentiators in this business from others. And definitely we also have the financial goals, uh, which are uh, measured in the revenues, profitability, people, marketing, uh, and other financial metrics. And also the competitive environment uh, identifies the most significant competitive threats to the business and portfolio context the current knowledge of uh, each state of solution portfolio information and enterprise strategy so the key inputs are the vision the mission the core values uh, enterprise business drivers what the competence are the financial goals the competitive environment which we live in and uh, the kpis the budget guardrails, which is the portfolio context and the qualitative data, 
and the key outputs are your portfolio budgets and the strategic themes. So each organization have uh, strategic pillars and strategic themes. So some people call it strategic objectives, which is also fine. You have strategic themes. So the programs and portfolios, they get aligned to the strategic themes. The strategic themes could be broad, it could be narrow. And in this class, we will discuss about what could be a good strategic theme versus a not so good strategic theme, right? For example, a broad strategic theme could be, you know, achieving profitability, right? It's very broad. But if you talk about, you know, crystallizing that, saying that achieving profitability uh, in a particular domain or a particular area or a particular geography, that plays a very, very important role. So a strategic theme should be broad so that, you know, the programs and portfolios get encompassed or get enveloped in the strategic themes, but also they should not be too hazy, right? So that is very, very important when you define the strategic themes. Now, the organization can have uh, a safe enterprise, maybe a single or a multiple portfolio. In a small to a mid-sized enterprise, one safe portfolio can typically govern the entire solution set. In a large enterprise, there can be multiple safe portfolios, typically uh, one each business line or a division, okay? Uh, how to identify safe portfolios? That's a very good question. Number one, by offering, by offering, okay? So you can talk about by offering in a bank, you could have a separate portfolio for depositing, lending, payments, investment, okay? So that could be one. By market, right? So by market of people, right? The millenniums versus uh, boomers, uh, or by business units, okay? You can have business, different business units. So in a small enterprise, you may have, strategic theme and everything can be covered in a portfolio or a single portfolio but in a large enterprise you may have safe portfolio multiple safe portfolios to achieve the strategic so in one of the insurance organization where i was consulting uh, we had these strategic pillars and we had these multiple agile release trains aligned to these strategic themes okay so that is that is where it comes in now, how do we create or how do we articulate these uh, these multiple portfolios? So what we do is we have something called a portfolio canvas, okay? We have a portfolio canvas. The portfolio canvas is a template. So safe portfolio canvas is adaptation from business model canvas uh, that highlights the development of value stream and other aspects specific to safe portfolio. This canvas can be easily updated uh, using uh, the business change and it's got about nine blocks okay which appear in bold icons the new blocks appear in the standard font and there are three main sections the top horizontal is the value proposition which you see here on the top uh, this is the value proposition uh, the second section what you see the value proposition describes the customer and the value delivered the second is the resource and the activity okay and the third is the cost structure so if we go one by one so in the class what i normally uh, ask my participants to do is actually use this template to, to work on a case study and we talk about what the value streams are right what the value streams are uh, in an energy section it could be you know um, it could be the wind energy it could be the uh, you know uh, solar energy those could be different value streams what are the solutions being derived out of it? Who are my customers? What are the channels for their delivery, right? What is the customer relationship? How, how is customer relationship managed? Uh, what are these hypothetical budgets? So budgets could start off with some rough order of magnitude from the top. And then as we go down and decompose our work into the programs and the team level and identify what the features are and what we are building, uh, we talk about these budgets being revised again, right? So these budgets are further fleshed out in our business case. We also have a KPIs, revenues, cost structures, revenue stream, so on and so forth. A portfolio canvas can be used multiple times, right? So when we are trying to formulate our strategy, we can have a portfolio canvas. 
to know what the current state is and we can have a portfolio canvas for the future state all right so we can talk about the future state also the current state and the future state and we need to understand how do we bridge from this current state to the future state right and that is where we derive so in the strategy formulation sessions what i do is i ask the business leaders to create the current portfolio canvas right and i ask them to derive what the future state looks like and the future st state could have multiple portfolio canvases right and we plan out how do we get there okay so along with my training i also do consulting for business transformation so that's where it, it comes in handy and that becomes a picture okay so the portfolio canvas is a template for identifying specific safe portfolio defines the domain of portfolio and other key elements which makes this very interesting so this further gets translated into a business case so before we go into uh, uh, into what the business case is all about uh, which will be covered generally in, in a three-day program well, because it's a very short time here so we do have kanban kanban makes our work visual we have a portfolio kanban system uh, to visualize and manage the flow of portfolio epics uh, from ideation through analysis implementation and completion there are several kanban systems used throughout the safe including the team program solution portfolio kanban and these systems help match demand to capacity based on work in progress limits and visualize bottlenecks in each process state helping to identify opportunities of relentless improvement and kanban systems include policies for governing the entry and exit criteria so in this kanban framework what you see is the funnel so all the good ideas coming from your business coming from your teams are all captured here everything comes into the funnel the big ideas come into the funnel these ideas could be new business opportunities right cost savings uh, marketplace changes mergers acquisitions problem solving with existing solutions, they all could come into the funnel. Once these idea comes into the funnel, there could be an ideation process created here. So for one of the healthcare industry, I happen to create an innovation management life cycle. So in this innovation management life cycle, we design the way all good ideas, they come in. While I used to work for EMC, we used to have an innovation management framework where all the great ideas comes in and they get filtered, right? And then you start reviewing, refining, understanding of epics, creating epic hypothesis statement, preliminary cost estimates, WSJF, right? Uh, weighted shortage of first is a very, very interesting component, right? So it talks about prioritization. So once, once we have these preliminary hypothesis statement and WSJF, the, the, um, epic is pulled when the epic owner is available and here we'll talk about you know defining what the minimal viable product is lean business case go no go decisions uh, pull when epic owner has the capacity you have the portfolio backlog epics are approved sequenced is used uh, pull when a when lpm is available and then we move into the implementing stage where we build evaluate mvp either we pivot make a change to go back and see how we can evolve or we can preserve what we had made a decision about and we can move further right so this kanban system makes your policies explicit uh, they provide governance they pro provide gates for uh, go no go decisions right and then we when when the epic is completed and no longer needs a portfolio concern it is marked as done so here is no governance required okay so that's that's important uh, in the class we will cover more on the portfolio kanban system right we'll talk about the work in progress limits so you will have work in progress limits at you know reviewing analyzing portfolio backlog implementing now uh, this is a very visually powerful tool so a lot of organizations who i have worked with uh, they have used portfolio Kanban systems and that allows the whole leadership team to understand uh, where are we currently at, what state are we at, right? 
So it provides a complete holistic view and uh, it provides uh, a good idea. It visualizes work and we exactly know where are we at this point of time. Very powerful tool. Uh, this recollects uh, my thought uh, when, when um, I was looking and I was doing some research. Uh, Boeing had these Kanban systems. So uh, you could do a little search on YouTube and type in uh, Boeing 747. It's a little old video, but you can watch a video uh, on YouTube which talks about uh, lean uh, portfolio management using Kanban approach. So they show in the video, there's a big hangar. In this hangar, they got multiple aircrafts. Right, so in this aircrafts, on the floor of the hangar, they got multiple timelines, okay? And based on how the aircraft is being assembled, the aircraft inches towards the door of the hangar. So basically what happens is it's, it's a live board. So you will see these aircraft move from a day to second day to the third day or multiple hours. And if you were a portfolio manager who want to see how many of your aircrafts have been completed, the assembly line, you could just go on top of the highest point of this hangar and you could know that this particular number of aircrafts are <clears throat> towards getting close towards the done part of your workflow process okay so kanban is very powerful it makes your work visual and it, it helps you to move forward all right evolving the traditional approaches Okay, so evolving traditional portfolio mindset, right? So the traditional approach is more about people organized in functions, silos, temporary project teams, got a start, got an end. But using the lean approach, we have people organized around value streams. There's a continuous flow of value. In traditional, we talk about funding the projects and using cost accounting and to be very stringent on that. But whereas in lean approaches, we talk about funding value streams, lean budget and guardrails. In traditional, we talk about big upfront, up down annual planning and budgeting. Whereas in lean approach, we talk about value stream budgeting, it just dynamically participatory budgeting. In traditional, we talk about centralized, unlimited work intake and project overloads. And in lean agile approaches, we talk about strategic demand managed by portfolio Kanban, decentralized intake of value streams. In traditional approach, we talk about overly detailed business case, which takes months and sometimes years for the business case to produce. And it's it's a cell document. The business case is a cell document. Many a times the business case even not even hit the reality. Some organizations spend a lot of time on business cases to get the accuracy of the business case uh, and sometimes they make up numbers or sometimes they uh, have numbers which may not be realistic or sometimes they get so in detail actually they are getting into the planning phase where they're getting all the uh, information right out there and sometimes when the business cases are signed off they're not even relevant right so we need to move away from that into lean business case with MVP business outcomes hypothesis forecasting, estimating, right? So those could all be the things. Project governance by phase gates, waterfall, milestones, progressive, progress, progress measured by task for completions, but here product and services governed by self-managing agile release trains, uh, objective measured, milestone based on working solutions. So you're basically not uh, measuring the progress by task, but you're measuring both on milestones and working solutions and outcomes so the measurement is more outcome based so that's that's very important in this program we will also talk about uh, you know how a business case is developed right what are the ingredients of a lean business case 
uh, very interesting. We'll be using a case study. Uh, we'll be also uh, helping you to derive out the strategic themes. We'll talk about what the strategic themes are, uh, how these strategic themes actually help uh, to build uh, build uh, the art, agile release trains, so on and so forth. How the budgeting is done, the participatory budgeting, how do you apply guardrails, right, to keep in track. We'll talk about the horizons, different horizons of the solution, right? Uh, what happens to each horizon of solution? Which ones do you need to continue funding? Which ones do you need to stop funding? So those are the things which we will discuss more in, in, in this particular space and which of the solutions uh, would be emerging and which of the solutions you might have to retire or decommission. So action filled, um, interesting program. Um, I, I look forward to see most of you all there in, the, in that particular session. One last thing is uh, when uh, as a consultant uh, what, what I do is I go to organizations and I do this uh, business agility assessment test to understand where are the organizations in the journey all right are they pre crawling uh, crawling walking running flying all right and we periodically apply this assessment to see where the teams are at what stages of the teams are right and what stages of the program is what stages are at all right so we talk about all these different levels okay and uh it's very interesting to to apply this and uh and and we need to we need to remember to uh, you know uh, measure and grow and also celebrate success once we reach a particular uh you know objective or a particular milestone right so that periodic results and periodic assessment help us uh, understand where are we currently where do we have to reach and how much more we have to move further okay so creating high level summaries using business agility assessment go deeper into the seven core competencies and see where are each of these core competency currently sitting at and where do you think it should be right so that is where we have to bridge the gap and what could be the ways of bridging that gap that's very important in the business agility assessment when i uh, perform this assessment in most of the organization i do tweak and tailor based upon what the organization needs are in one of the insurance companies where i was doing the agile transformation i actually completely tailored the business agility assessment and uh, got to see what their framework was and see how we actually match with what we actually have and uh, we did team assessments we did program assessments we did agile release train assessments and portfolio assessment and so what what was the current state and which are the domains we have to actually improve and move further right so we have to start looking at and again in this assessment we talk about how do we move from a zero to a one or one to a two or two to a three and it's not magical okay it's not magical it doesn't happen overnight because it's a change of process it's a change of culture and it's a change where how we actually so i hope this session was informative uh, there's a lot of action and there's a lot of uh, information in in this three-day program it's it's a really great program i do love teaching this program uh, we have a, a, a weekend lpm badge coming on 11th 12th june uh, this is 8 a.m. Uh, Indian Standard Time. If you can translate that to Australian time, it'll be five hours ahead. So, uh, yeah, that's the one. We have an uh, SSM training, which is safe for Scrum Masters, coming this weekend, 7th and 8th. There is a weekend batch uh, on 14th and 15th May. There is a product owner, product management coming on 21st, 22nd May. Uh, there's an LPM coming on uh, in the month of june uh right and we have the weekend batch uh, of leading safe on 25th 26th june and uh 9th and 10th june so that's that's where uh it comes in okay so i look forward uh to to uh you know meeting you all in one of the sessions and uh, it'll be um, of a great interest uh to to see each one of you there share my knowledge and again it's just not my knowledge it's a collective knowledge so i believe that you know we follow a continuous learning culture and it's just not one brain teaching you know the multiple brains 
Uh, I know this is a webinar. It's pretty, uh, you know, one-sided conversation. But in our training, we will have a two-sided conversation, and uh, definitely, it'll help teams to understand and you know leverage and understand based on their experience, my experience, and everyone's experience. I hope the session was informative, and I look forward to seeing you in our closest program. And uh, I hope to share some of uh, my valuable inputs more further. Thank you.